A very good morning to all present here. On behalf of Department of Applied Electronics and Instrumentation Engineering, Guru Nanak Institute of Technology, under GIS Group of Educational Initiatives, myself, Dr. Paramita Banerjee, welcome you all to the AICTE AQIS sponsored uh -huh. short term training program, STTP Phase 3, on green IoT for green environment. Now, let me tell you something about our college. So, Guru Nanak Institute of Technology was established in the year of 2003. The institute offers six BTEC courses, two MTEC courses, two diploma courses, along with BCA, MCA, and BHM courses, with some of the courses affiliated to NBA. The institute is affiliated to Macau, approved by AICT accredited by UGC and that. The organizing department was also established in the year of 2003. The department emphasizes on creating electronics and instrumentation engineers with outstanding technical competency acceptable worldwide to impart research aptitude, research aptitude for social benefits. Now coming to our STT. From today, we are starting the third phase of this HTTP. The Internet of Things is an emerging paradigm that has gained popularity in the recent years. Green IoT represents the issue of reducing energy consumption of IoT devices, which leads a path to a sustainable green environment for IoT systems. In recent days, green IoT is a focus area of the research. This STTP phase three aims to give an exposure to the participants in the field of green IoT applications for our smart environment. As per the guidance of the AICTE, this STTP phase three will be conducted in the online mode. Now may I request all the participants, the dignitaries, our respective principal sir, our head of the department ma'am, and all my fellow colleagues to join the virtual lamp lighting to inaugurate the program. So please give me one minute time to share my screen. Uh, Bapita ma'am, can you please uh, make me co-host so that I can share my screen? Okay, okay, okay. Arumita? Yes, ma'am, I'm sharing. Just give me one minute time to share my screen.
so thank you all now let's start the program with a very inspirational and a very heartwarming message from our students to spread hope in all our minds which we wish will help us tide through this difficult situation तृप्ति जन बेचे थानवर जुद्ध नरे उठो पृथ्वी स्वप्न देखा बाकी एखो जो अनेक स्वप्न पूरण हवा बाकी thank you all now may i request our honorable principal sir professor dr shantanu kumar shin to address our participants thank you paramita and uh, very welcome to all the participants uh, to this uh, third phase of uh, sttp funded by iict on green iot which is a very relevant field in the recent trend and i am very happy that uh, this is the third phase of the stp that is getting uh, going to be started from today and uh, earlier two stp have already been conducted and this is the third one and i think there is another that is fourth round of uh, stp is there and uh, it is good that in this uh, pandemic situation also this kind of uh, you know academic activities and uh, this uh, faculty development program which is a very essential element for the growth and development of a faculty is getting conducted by the department of applied electronics and instrumentation <coughs> and in this uh, situation also they have got the fund or uh, some other departments also have got some other funds this has from uh, in this pandemic situation so uh, this is a, a very uh, relevant field and i believe that in area two uh, programs fdv programs the many faculty have been benefited and this is the third version and here also and uh, since uh, that uh, there is a tie up with the texas instrument at gate who are you know conducting the program through hands on experience so hands on uh, had it been good it would have been done at the college premises physically but since this is not possible so this is getting conducted through online 
However, since uh, this is an MDP, so all the faculty members are the participants. So our expectation is more, and faculty they are the guide, you know, and they, so they can cope up, and they can lead the next generation students on this new and latest technology. And IoT is the latest technology, and whereas green IoT is the most sophisticated area of IoT, is a very precise domain. And I believe uh, in the two last FDP, the faculty members have gained a lot of uh, knowledge, and they, you have got uh, the very famous speakers. So uh, I'll not take uh, much time, as we have seen that uh, this is a good thing that the uh, COVID infection is getting uh, downward day by day, and uh, although the death rate is uh, uh, quite a matter of worry. However, both are declining, and we believe that uh, within coming one month, everything will be normalized, and then uh, again everything will start. So, without wasting time, uh, I'd like to thank um, Professor Bapita Roy and her team uh, for arranging uh, this kind of events in the midst of you know all these online classes and being autonomous college. Uh, our classes are going on fully and exams also are getting completed in scheduled time. So a lot of pressures are there on the faculty members. So in the midst of all this uh, part, they are conducting this kind of uh, programs, which is uh, very beneficial for, for all the faculty members, college, department, etc. So best of luck and uh, continue this endeavor. And I say very uh, best of luck uh, to all the participants also. And moreover, I'd like to welcome all the participants and particularly the speakers for uh, giving their valuable time in their busy schedule. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now uh, I'm requesting our head of the department, ma'am, Mrs. Bapita Roy, to felicitate our principal, sir, with a virtual flower bouquet. Ma'am, please give me one minute time to share my screen. Okay, Paramukha. Mm, thank you. This is, this is from our department. Thank, thank you, sir, for good. your, for your uh, inspiration. Without your inspiration, it cannot be happened. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now it is the time to request our head of the department and the coordinator of the program, Mrs. Bapita Roy, to address our participants. A very good morning to all the participants, uh, to Principal Sir, to our honorable resource person, and my fellow colleagues, the team members. Uh, actually, uh, this is the third phase of our uh, AICT sponsored HTTP program. Uh, in the previous phase, we have conducted the HTTP phase one, phase two, and uh, some of the participants, it is very, really very, we are very gl glad that is some of the participants are still now with us from the first phase. So it reflects that they are uh, getting the benefited. Actually, this, uh, this basically motivates us to continue our HTTP program. Uh, we basically conduct these phases. Basically, this current phase is on the, there is Android app development. There is uh, uh, nano robotics. Uh, there is low power devices in the electric vehicles. There is the application of uh, uh, green IoT and the hands-on training, uh, by, uh, which will be conducted by the Edgate technologies, like the previous two phases. And uh, the instructions sheet has already been shared with all the participants. Hopefully they have all joined in our common WhatsApp group. And all the instructions that is very clearly mentioned that is not fixed by our department, that is the guideline of AICT. So you must follow all the guidelines. And uh, one thing is that while you are joining in this, uh, uh, in this uh, current HTTP program, so try to concentrate in this program because we have planned lots of, that is the hands-on training, the, uh, the speakers that are from the different uh, reputed universities and uh, institutes, 
they are basically will be with us in the coming this week so hopefully you will enjoy the workshop enjoy the fdp program and one thing this is the outcome based education and we all are the faculty members and this is the part of the teaching learning program so there is no kind there is nothing that is you are the students we are the teacher that is not like that this is the teaching learning program so the every session must be the interactive session that will be a great and hope we will enjoy we will basically spend this uh, uh, current week with you and uh, there is a common whatsapp group if you face any problem you can directly contact with me in the whatsapp or you can contact with the other organizing team member the phone numbers are already given so hopefully you will enjoy this uh, phase like the pvs phases and one thing is that edgate technology will provide a separate uh, certificate who basically conduct who basically participated the four phases of their training program so you will get the extra certificate from edgate technology if you basically successfully participated the four phases so paramita you just uh, we are uh, uh, in time so you just conduct you just uh, conclude the inaugural session and you just welcome our resource person today thank you all thank you thank you ma'am so ma'am with your permission can we start our technical session today's technical session 1 so yes, for, for this session we have our honorable speaker professor omlan chakraborty with us sir on behalf of department of applied electronics and instrumentation engineering guru nanak institute of technology we welcome you in our sttp phase 3 on green iot for green environment now may i take the pleasure to introduce our honorable speaker professor omlan chakraborty to all the participants and all the dignitaries present here So, Professor Omlan Chakraborty is a full-time professor in the A. K. Chaudhary School of Information Technology at the University of Calcutta, and the former dean, faculty of engineering and technology in of his university. He is an M. Tech from University of Calcutta and did his doctoral research at Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata. He was. Princeton University USA during 2011 and 2012 he has almost 20 years of experience in engineering education and research he is the recipient of prestigious dst boy scout fellowship award in engineering science in the year of 2011 Indian National Science Academy Visiting Faculty Fellowship in the year of 2014, JSPS Invit Invitation Research Award in the year of 2016 from Japan, and many more. He has also served in various capacities in various higher education organizations, both at national and international levels. He has received multiple project grants in the areas of security in cyber physical systems, IoT, embedded system design, VLSI design, quantum computing, computer vision, and data science from various national and international agencies. He has contributed immensely in the development of intelligent algorithms and systems to support real-time applications, cyber security, quantum computing, healthcare, environment, and water quality, etc. He was the principal investigator of the Center of Excellence in Systems Biology and Biomedical Engineering, University of Calcutta, funded by MHRD under Techi. three funding during 2013-2017 till date he has graduated 16 phd students he has published around 180 plus research papers in referred journals and conferences he is a senior member of i distinguished visitor distinguished speaker for acm vice chair of ieee ceda india chapter vice president of society for data science and life member of csi india he is the series editor of 
Springer Transactions on Computer Systems and Networks, Associate Editor of Elsevier Journal of Computers and Electrical Engineering and Guest Editor of Springer Journal of Applied Sciences. His areas of interest are machine learning, computer vision, cyber physical systems, quantum computing, and VLSI CAD. Sir, we once again welcome you in this STTP program. Now, may I request our uh, head of the department, ma'am, and coordinator of the program, Mrs. Bapita Roy, to felicitate our uh, honorable speaker with a virtual flower bouquet. Good morning, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Papita. Good morning to all the participants. Sir, this is for you, Thank sir. You. Thank you. Thank you. I am very honored. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, I will make you the co-host. You can uh, share your screen. Just give yeah. me one. Now, may I request our uh, coordinator, ma'am, to felicitate our speaker with the virtual memento. So I, I'd like to request our organizing team to please display the memento. Thank you. Uh, Sir, uh, thanks to the is, organizers. Yeah, thanks. From uh, the organizing team. Yeah, thanks for this uh, gratitude. Thank you once again. Shall I start? Now you are co host. You can share your screen. Okay, okay, great. So, so, good morning to all of you. And I think I am also speaking for the uh, third time here in this uh, workshop series. And thanks to the department, uh, thanks to Narona Institute of Technology, thanks to the principal of this institute for, for inviting me. And I welcome you all to my lecture. Sir, uh, we are Guru Nanak, Guru Nanak Institute oh, of Technology. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's Guru Nanak Institute of Technology. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so thank you all once again. And let me uh, start my presentation. Uh, so, uh, so this lecture, what I will present today is on a very upcoming uh, domain of uh, IoT. I don't know whether it is already covered or, or at least uh, something has been discussed on this. But if not, it will be better for me because I can I can explain it in my own way. And and this is also a sort of new field for me, as you know that I started in this domain of uh, IoT for the for 2017, almost four years. We are working in this domain, and the domain of 5G we got exposed with a with a very high level meeting, okay, from the from the people from Ministry of Information Technology, Government of India and uh, some of the some of the professors from other institutes uh, where we thought that uh, that means the convergence of iot and 5g is very inevitable right and on that particular line we also started work and we are, we are doing this work for the past one year i will try to tell that what we have done and what is our uh, uh, goal in this particular domain okay in the in the future years as a research. And also, I uh, some of you can also join that activity. But before getting into those, I will, uh, at first, I will try to try to motivate you that what is 5G? Because I think IoT, all of you have gone through multiple lecture courses, uh, maybe in this workshop or in other workshops. And, but, but I think that 5G is still very nascent. So I will touch upon, I will, my lecture will start with uh, 5G, the concept of 5G. And then I will slowly, slowly get into that, how IoT and 5G convergence happen. And then I will move into some of the application areas, some of the very interesting application areas and what we are doing in this particular domain. So let me start my, my presentation. Okay, I will try to keep it within, uh, within one and a half hours time. So I hope my screen is visible to all of you, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your slide is visible. Okay. So, 
So what is this 5G? The 5G is basically the G is for generation, right? It is the, it is the fifth generation of mobile communication. And all of us, we know that uh, we started from uh, 1G to 2G, 2.5G, 3G, and then we are at presently, we are Hello, sir. Yes, yes. So actually, I, I actually I knew all the participants. That's why you. Okay, okay, okay. No issue. So, Sorry. so yeah. Let me start again. So, so five G is the fifth generation mobile, and uh, okay, we started from one G, two G, two point five G, three G, and present uh, present scenario of four G, uh, which gives you a, a really a good uh, data rate. Uh, gives uh, gives us a, a good bandwidth. Right, and we can uh, surely enjoy a lot of a lot of data transfer applications, okay, through internet connectivity and all this, right? And we know that if we go back to three G, we will be in a very miserable situation, right? We know that some of the uh, some of the mobile handsets needs to be okay were replaced because the users shifted from three G to four G. Now, now the spectrum which is already knocking or which is already there at least at least in some of the many of the specialized applications 5g is already there that is not that 5g is not there but maybe 5g is not there still at the at the generic user level but the technology is pretty much existing for the last two two and a half years okay and obviously some of the some of the industry giants are already uh, leapt forward to 6g so, so what, what benefits, okay, what benefits 5G will give, give us and how the benefits of 5G can, okay, can be leveraged well so that we can have IoT applications. So when I tell this, it is not that the IoT applications will have to leverage something. Actually, the 5G standard, okay, this is very important, okay? So the, the 5G standard is, is actually the incorporating, okay, that has already incorporated, right, the, the device level communication, the machine to machine communication. So it is not that we have to try to transform 5G and we have to do something new. So when the 5G standard, which is the 3GPP, okay, 3G the partnership standard, which is the partnership among some, uh, okay, some telecom giants, so the 3GPP partnership, when they uh, when they frame this uh, frame this IoT uh, 5G uh, charter, okay, they have already included that uh, in this million devices communication, right? And that's why that's why integration of 5G with IoT is seamless. We don't need to, okay, we don't we don't need to do any extra thing. It's already within the standard, right? And we will try to try to say to greater to get an insight on what are those standards and how how it directly affects the present IoT applications. Okay. So, so the important aspect of 5G is we will repeat it okay, all, all through this, all through this lecture. I will I will have multiple repetitions so that it gets into it gets well into all of your understanding. Okay. And its first is obviously the bandwidth, okay, the speed the data rate, okay, the bandwidth and the data rate, and, and obviously latency. The bandwidth data rate latency is, okay, is exceedingly the best, okay, and it's, and it's pretty high compared to the present 4G standards, right, and that's why 5G is being so, uh, okay, they are, they are being uh, so well expected right in all of the applications or in the or in the major major usage though having said so okay there are also also a lot of uh, issues in regards to 5g right in the okay, because because it's a it's a it's a high high energy type of signal and a lot of a lot of other issues are there whether the, how it affects the biological world how it affects the, the environment high frequency signals how the resonance with the environment 
But those I will not touch uh, touch here, okay, in this particular part because I'm not expert of that also, right? I my expertise lies in the in the in the interplay between communication and 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 uh, computing, okay. So I think that is but that is also an interesting domain. A lot of okay issues are coming up in that domain, and uh, uh, the the partners, uh, the five G partners, are constantly working on that, okay. So this is the this is the evolution, okay. This is the evolution what what I was what I was uh, okay speaking to right to all of you. So so this so this LTE right LTE is the okay is basically the standard for mobile communication, which is called a long term evolution, okay, right? It is it actually started from two thousand four, right? I think approximately the start of two point five G. Right and and uh, so so LTE advanced and LTE evolution and 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 this if you see this REL REL ten okay these are these are all three GPP standard actually three GPP was a was a sort of uh, okay third generation partnership project okay we started when the people started to uh, think that hey what will happen from two two point five G okay what what will be the next step from two point five G so three G start and the and the standard of 3G is basically a sort of uh, okay 3GPP, right? And this REL 10 and REL 11 are all release versions. So they have this the 3GPP consortium, okay, has uh, okay has chartered different release versions which actually have generated different standards of this of this 3G to 4G and now the 5G. So if you see the 2018 2019, right? Uh, okay, already the uh, 5G standard came into existing around around 2016, right? And it and it started deployment early 2019. Okay, in 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 the in the other countries may not be in India in large scale, uh, but but in many of the countries uh, okay have already deployed this 5G. So this is just to just to let you know that uh, that how how, okay, how fast the the progress has worked up and. Uh, and how the standardization has uh, has actually carried over in each of the phases. Now, now if you look into, the, as I told, that the the five G standard inherently looked upon the issues like not only connecting people. This is very important. Take it once again, right? You need to uh, need to to have it very clearly. So, so up to the 4G, or if we see the evolution of mobile communication, right, the mobile communication was basically meant to connect people, right? I think that I can remember, but I think there was a, a very beautiful adver advertisement from, from one of the telecom giants that connecting people, so that, was their, okay, that was their tagline. Now, what, what 5G has incorporated is that, okay, apart from connecting people, which was already there in the, in the standards of uh, 3G and 4G, it has incorporated in the standard connecting devices, right? And that, and that made a key role that why there was, a, there was a flurry of activities, okay, or thought process, okay, considering that 5G as a backbone. Right, and, and, and we will see that the 5G is also a very layered architecture. So you know that device level communication or it can happen in different, different hierarchy. A device can communicate with device, a device can communicate with human, a device, a smaller device can communicate with a larger device. Right, so, so, so all these type of communications are possible in the domain of device to device communication. Right and 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 all these communications are being supported at the okay at the five G, and we know that what are the impact of this communication? Impact of these communications are our smart infrastructures, right? If you see the see the diagram on the top right, you will see there are smart infrastructures like smart health, smart grids, smart power grids, smart cities, okay, smart transportation. Okay, smart agriculture. So, 
so why why okay so, so why it is why it is so important that device to device communication is required to to have this in real bear uh, okay real uh, uh, stay right uh, this is very important because okay when we started a project with, with the government of West Bengal, Department of Science and Technology. Okay. Okay, it was it, okay. It was it was something that we will we will use a, a vision based uh, system, vision based system which will try to try to look into the uh, leaves or or flowers or fruits of a plant and try to predict that whether the the disease or the or the uh, uh, the nutrition deficiency the plant is having. Okay. If, but this is a pretty, this can be the, the data collection. Okay, the data collection of this type of system can be thought as a very easy, easy, easy stuff if you are trying to do it on a single plant in a lab, in a lab type of setup where you can have only two, three, four plants. Okay. But if you are trying to deploy this application in an agricultural area, which is, which is lying on hectares, hectares of land of agricultural area, can you understand that how many devices you need and how much data these devices will generate, right? And this will, this will not be possible for, for, for the present spectrum, 4G. So there's so this massive, so we have to understand what is, the, what is the best, what is the main push of 5G. If you are really want to have a smart city and if you want to have the smart parking, parking sensors and others, okay, smart transportation, you have to understand that how many sensors you have to have, right? And you have to have a coordination among the sensors. You have to have, uh, okay, a sort of analytics, which will be controlling the activities associated with the activities of the humans, okay, with the environment, right? Or activities of other machines with the environment. It's a, it's a, it's a huge amount of data. So there is, there is no other way that unless we have a very, uh, very broad backbone of data. Right, and, and, and this backbone will be provided the large scale deployment of devices. So this is, this is the fundamental which you have to understand. The, the large scale of deployment of devices and if they are working for, uh, okay, for the same ecosystem, it's a huge amount of data, right? And that amount of data will require a, okay, a sort of spectrum or bandwidth okay, to support that. Right, and that is what is 5G, and that's why you can have massive deployment of devices and applications which are uh, which requires massive deployment can be supported by 5G, and no signal technology. Obviously, apart from this, there are, there are some other things like you have a high speed data rate, you have a very low latency, okay, you have a high reliability, right? You have an exact, very precise time synchronization, right? So. So this all was not there in any of the previous standards, okay? Because because uh, because automation, right, and device, okay, and device based operations were not being thought upon. People people thought that mobile communication is only for connecting people to people, okay? And that's why the five G is so innovative, and five G is actually so so powerful. So, so as I touched upon that, okay, what is what is the, what is the, the the trust areas or what are the offerings of five G in terms of okay okay in terms of applications? There are three offerings, and based on the three offerings, you can just build a pyramid, which is a which is a huge huge association of applications and 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 uh, and, uh, and the technologies. Okay, so. So IMT is a standard of international mobile telecommunication standard. And an IMT standard actually um, uh, incorporated the 3GPP standard from 2020, okay, which is basically a standard which actually defines a mobile communication is not only for, for person to person, but mobile, mobile communication is also for machine to machine and device to device, right? So, so the three, Three offerings of 5G are enhanced mobile broadband. Okay, so the so the broadband, so the mobile broadband is enhanced. You will see it's very broad, right? Massive machine type communications. 
So it's a it's a it's a huge amount of machine to machine communication can be incorporated. Okay, and ultra reliable and low latency communications. So it's a it's a highly reliable, which means that the the effect of error is very well minimized by different types of error decoding and correction policies. And latency of communication is pretty low. So you can you can have a have a very fast, okay, a, a very fast access and very fast connectivity, right? And very fast uh, okay, uh, okay, access and 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 transfer operations okay, using your data network in the 5G. So these are the three three very good offerings from 5G broadband. Okay, very, 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 very enhanced broadband. It's called EMDB, something like that. Okay, enhanced mobile broadband, EMDB. Okay, massive, massive mobile. It's called massive machine. It's called ultra, ultra actually, ultra, uh, okay, massive machine. Okay, sorry, machine, uh, machine, massive machine that communications and ultra reliable. Okay, so, so these, these actually generates a lot of applications, right? Whether it is a smart home, smart building, smart city, industrial automation, mission critical applications, self-driving car. Okay, use, use the, use the, uh, connect, the, connect the cloud from your, from your device ends, right? And 3D video, okay, ultra high definition videos. You can also people are trying with, uh, with the sort of technology, we come to that, which, which actually tells you that you can have a, a, a 3D teleportation. Okay, it's a it's a it's a sort of projection of uh, okay it's a it's a virtual reality projection but you can do a meeting where you are not not there physically but your virtual reality you can be in the meeting so those type of uh, those type of applications okay are come okay it, it will be deployed which is a uh, which is a, a communication which requires uh, a technology which requires communication between devices uh, okay, a data transfer and also and also the human connectivity at different uh, points. Okay. So, so the parameters as we okay, as we see that the, the 5G 5G not only focused on bandwidth, uh, okay, five, okay, latency, data rate. 5G also focused on availability. This is very important. Right, availability means means that you know that the present mobile communications or present uh, present wireless mobile communications uh, fails in some okay in some aspects when you have when you move into uh, okay some regions where signal cannot penetrate due to obstacles, right? Because the cellular cellular pattern is not okay is not very well well adjusted to those particular coverage. Due to the lack of coverage, actually, due to the lack of coverage, you cannot connect, okay, from every places in your office, right, or, or, or in a particular place in your city, because the coverage is low. 5G, try, 5G have solved this problem with a different hierarchy of cells, which will come later. So this is one of the, uh, one of the important aspect of 5G also, right? Spectrum availability. Sometimes you tell that coverage is there, but you don't have spectrum. Okay, means okay, means you don't have all the all the routes are busy. So all the routes are busy means a sort of spectrum. But but five G tries to extend the spectrum in such a way, right? It's obviously a broadband, but it also extends the spectrum in such a way that you can you can have a very high uh, like a very high percentage of availability. Okay. Network network energy is one of the energy is also one of the important thrust apart from the okay, apart from the front end application scenarios. What I just said that latency, data rate, bandwidth, the 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 back end scenarios of applications like energy is also very well the energy and battery life, battery life of low power IoT devices, the the way the spectrum the way the protocols has been designed. Okay, the network energy, or the access to the network. Okay, they they have been predominantly reduced here. Okay, the protocols which has been used are predominantly reduces that the the way the 
the way the, and the way the radio frequency communication works up in this particular domain, 5G, they have specially taken care of this part that it will reduce the network energy as well as the as well as the energy of the IoT devices. So, so what we can see that the, the, the 5G gives you a sort of a huge push, okay, towards the IoT application, and that leads to the IoT convergence. So, so regarding the speed, uh, okay, now we'll go okay to the, some of the some of the uh, okay, real data what we have. So, so if you see the speed of uh, 3.4G, the advanced 4G, and the 5G, okay. 5G is around 10 times, 10 times the data rate, okay? 10 times the data rate, what, what is there? And that's, the, that's one of the very strong point of 5G, 10,000 megabits per second. It's a, it's, a, it's a huge data rate, okay? We are operating, I think that all of us know that we are operating at a speed of uh, like our normal, uh, the normal internet internet connectivity at our offices are around 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 60 80 100 150 mbps okay now we are we are we are having 10000 mbps okay now why why this is possible this is possible because the millimeter wave okay the millimeter wave is a is a radio frequency okay which is which is pretty short, but and who is uh, okay, which uh, um, wavelength ranges from uh, one millimeter to ten millimeter. Uh, this is the uh, this is the wavelength of the okay, of this particular uh, wave. Okay, right, and that actually leads us okay leads us to a to a. To, to a frequency which is of the order of 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. Right. Right. And so and so due to this high frequency, high frequency signals, right? This uh, this uh, uh, this 5G, 5G communication is pretty fast. Just to let you know that this particular city, like okay, Professor Jagadish Chandra Bose. Was the was the researcher who first who first showed the effect or who first discovered the millimeter wave? Okay, okay. He, Professor Bose, had actually generated sixty gigahertz, sixty gigahertz millimeter wave. Right, and that's why one of one of my professors tells me that it is this. This city and actually is very well connected to our university also, uh, okay, which actually hosted this uh, the birth of millimeter wave. Uh, okay, I think I think Jagadish Bose was around 1890s or something uh, okay, at that period. So after around 130 years, okay, that wave is explored, and that is now coming as a giant killer killer application or a or what I can say, a uh, uh, okay, backbone of the killer applications which we're thinking now. So, so, so that's what is science and that's what is innovation and that's what is research, okay? So, so you see the impact of that particular activity what Professor, the pioneering scientist, Professor Bose started in his, in his small lab in President's College. Okay, so so this is our millimeter wave. It's a it's a it's a really a long history and very well connected to uh, to Indian Indian research and Bengal research. Now, low latency. What is low latency means? Low latency means okay. It is it is a delay between delay between your your sending and receiving information. Okay, you try to request to say okay, you send a request okay to. To one of the stations and to get a reply. So what's the what's the turnaround time? That can be approximated as a latency. In the case of in the case of the present 4G. So, so in the case of uh, okay, 4G it is around 200 milliseconds. This particular latency. 
Whereas in the case of 5G, the promise is that it will be one millisecond. So you can expect that it will not tell that, okay, I am connecting. Okay, you will see that in many of the, uh, okay, many of the applications, uh, okay, tell that it's connecting. It's not connecting. Okay, you just uh, press and it gets connected. So that's all. Because there is a, there is a huge reduction in latency. Right, and this and this latency is a very important aspect of of machine to machine communication. Connected systems. Why? Why? Because, okay, because when when the when the systems communicate, right the right it okay okay if the delay is zero or when I tell that one millisecond is absolute zero, okay, more or less absolute zero in terms of delay. Okay, it means that the machine doesn't have to have to synchronize much with each other because synchronization synchronization among the machines or among the devices due to the delay okay can cause a lot of failures and can make the things pretty complex right those who have uh, those who have experience in designing dynamic control systems okay because they know that how how uh, how predominantly the irregular fashion of delay Will will uh, okay, will be a different uh, a different complex uh, okay, complex modeling needs to be done okay or complex architectural design in terms of hardware needs to be done if we can if we can have a sort of communication where the zero or where the delay is zero or near zero like one millisecond we don't have to bother on those and you and you okay, and you just uh, uh, okay, just sh uh, shed off okay all those all those things what we need extra. Okay, that that reduces your energy. That uh, that makes your application very very tight, right? And that makes a, uh, makes a very fruitful in terms of application development, right? And that's why that's why the machine to machine communication, the machine to machine applications, okay, uh, they were not so agile before five G, and five G five G generated an agility in this particular domain. The critical applications like remote surgery, right, which is that a, which means that a particular surgeon is trying to is is pressing a key here and the and the knife or or the or the or the image is captured in the patient, which may be some some several kilometers away, are being done almost at the same time, so that the doctor doesn't have to doesn't have to adjust, okay, okay, himself or herself that oh this is the delay so. So when I do this here, that that works out there. Okay, they, okay, 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 it's not there. And so telesurgery. So telemedicine is still still working very good, but telesurgery, which is pretty critical, where the doctor sits at a remote end and 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 some and some sort of joysticks will be there or some sort of control panel will be there, or dashboard will be there, which actually have different buttons to move the um, uh, can move the equipments for the for the surgery or to capture the data for the surgery. It will be done within a within a zero delay, right? and the doctor will almost feel that he's doing it in real time. Simultaneous translating. This is a this is a business application. Okay, this application means that it is. It, normally, you see that nowadays we are, uh, okay, we are working a lot of this on the web platform. We are doing web meetings, online meetings. So there are applications, okay, where. Where you can have the translation, uh, where okay, if all of us are not communicating the same language, uh, right, then uh, then my text has to be converted to your language, and then only you can listen it. But but what happens is that many of the present day translators are that there is a delay. So you get bored that okay, somebody has spoken something to you, and it comes to you after some uh, some interval of time. So that company, so that particular online communication is very difficult. Then, okay. So, so simultaneous translating is is a is a is a is a way by which it is actually translating very fast, right? And they use the edge edge computing devices where the data goes to the edge, edge translates it, and again sends to the sends to the receiver end within a very quick, uh, short amount of time because because the five G enables you to transfer the data within a no time actually. Okay, no time it reaches and only the translation time is required and and in no time it gets to the receiver. So this this is the effect of the bandwidth. Okay. So additional capabilities along okay, along with all this, you have the 
spectrum bandwidth and flexibility i will come i will i will throw a little light on this activity in this part there are a lot of ways you can you can adjust the spectrum you can you can distribute the spectrum uh, okay you can you can actually stretch the spectrum so a lot of adaptability okay the, the adaptability in the spectrum is being okay okay is 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 there in the 5g high availability high availability of your communication okay you can okay you can communicate you will not get the chances are not getting connectivity you're not getting coverage is very very minimal okay resilience okay it has a very very high fault tolerance uh, this architecture right it has a, it is a multiple hierarchical support of coverage so it's so so unless there is a catastrophe which actually destroys everything right or or if i frame it in other way that that if you compare the uh, the resilience in and catastrophe of the other existing mobile networks like like the present 4g compared to 5g 5g will survive at least when the when the when the effect is at least 10 times so so the effect is 10 times above compared to the compared to the point where 4g fails up to that point also 5g can still work so because due to a, due to a fantastic hierarchical architecture of the network and there okay a lot of lot of coverage and 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 signal spectrum provisions security confidential security in terms of confidentiality and integrity is being is being also taken care in authentication attacks and all these attack scenarios which will okay i will i will not cover this in this particular lecture details though i am very very interested to cover this particular issues but but in limitation of time and and and, and as a, as the as the focus is more on the on the iot applications and 5g i will not cover deep deep into the security aspect but this is very a very interesting interesting domain of 5g that they have also integrated the security protocols okay within this uh, within the uh, standards okay and and long battery life this is also one of the energy saving principles which has been incorporated in the 5g standards okay helps the devices of the iot at the uh, devices to to work for long okay I, okay actually if you look into the standards okay it tells that it can it can survive up to 10 years okay the way the standards has been uh, uh devised the battery power can be of 10 years okay that i don't know i didn't experiment on that but from the reference i found that it has been it has been said something like that. so you can expect that if it if it is not 10 years if it is one year also right it's it's, it's is fantastic right a deployed node okay its battery life is one year right it's fantastic so i stop here uh, okay if okay, if you have any questions if uh, okay if the audience have any questions okay i can i can answer to that and then i will move to the next part of the meeting so if there is any uh, topic or Okay, there is any question for from anyone, or you want to add something to this? What I have spoke, you are free to do that. I can just do, uh, okay, have a couple of minutes for this, or you can put it in the chat. Participant, yeah. Participants, if you have any query, you can write in the chat box. So there so is any, a question in the chat box. Okay, there is a question. Okay. Okay. In case of robotic surgery, and how Dr. Five... Shomik put that. Yes. Yes. So, so very good question, Dr. Poddar. Actually, we are we are trying to look into more details about these applications and scenarios. Uh, okay. So, so you know that in a case of robotic surgery. Right, I have, I have, uh, okay, I have, okay, I have heard the, okay, the first lecture on robotic surgery, right, in 2017 when I was in a in a conference in Barcelona, right. It is it is called the CARS, it's the Computer Aided Radiology and Surgery, 
where the uh, the the chief chief researcher of the, of the of the group director of Imperial College, okay, spoke about robotic surgery. So what I understood by that is something like the robotic surgery means that you are replacing the, the, the human surgeons by robots, right? Now, when the robot is actually interacting with with your devices, right? It is not that they are they are touching the devices and feeling, or they are hearing the sounds of the devices like us, or they are visualizing the devices and they are doing the work. See, if you tell your doctor and you tell that, okay, and you ask the doctor to tell that, uh, so doctor, you will you will you will cut, okay, visually. Okay, doctor will tell oh, what you are talking about. I am okay. I am experienced to to do this for a long time. But but if you try to try to execute the same algorithm in an artificial system, okay, that you have to cut or you have to okay, you have to guide your scissors in a particular uh, okay line, right? You have to you have to understand that all the senses, all the senses of the robots, in, okay, will be data only. Or they are not senses like us. Right? We can touch and we can understand, hey, this is something. We can view and we can say that, oh, this is, has gone, gone this far. We can hear a sound and we can tell that, okay, this is this. But for a robot, what's a robot? A robot is for data. A robot visualization is data. Okay, it sees the image and it tries to recognize what is happening. Here. So you see that what is the data generated from the different types of surgical instruments that needs to be communicated to the robot and the robot intelligence should analyze that and should take the next step. So, so it is a very orchestrated activity between machine to machine when you are doing a robotic surgery. Okay? And for this, you need to have a zero latency, which is 5G, right? You need to have a, okay, okay, that means, and, and also there is, there is, there is one issue, sometimes, Sometimes you have to, okay, you have to have the data coming from the other sources. In the case of robots, okay, we need to feed the data to the robots, okay. So, so your question may be one angle that okay that the robot and the and the equipment are very local, okay, but but those communications also needs to be done, okay. And for those communications, we have the five D standard of of something low pan. Okay. Okay. Low low energy wireless personal area network. Okay, which are actually for low energy device to device communication. So if the robot is local, and your surgery is doing local, the device and the robot communication is done local. That also comes under the low pan standard of five G, which will which will actually take care of this device to device communication. And in the case the robot requires some sort of data from from other sources within a very zero latency, but it can always go for the big hall 5G network. Okay, backbone 5G network. Okay, so 5G network can seamlessly connect with the, with the front end networks, okay, like LoRa, Lopan, okay, uh, okay, these all type of networks and the 5G can be very seamlessly connected in the backbone. Right? So did you get your answer, Dr. Puddar? So, so I will go to the next discussion. So, so 5G enabler, okay? I have showed three, three highlighted. So there is another question. Oh, okay, okay, sure, sure, let me check. Okay, so that's a very good question. Yeah, Bishwaro Mukherjee, yeah. So, so it is not that it is reducing the power from the source of the signal. What it is trying to do, it is trying to, trying to operate the signal in a lower range of area, first of all. So it doesn't require more power. So, so power is also required to cover a longer distance. So if we try to, if we try to cover Okay, cover a particular distance with a longer range, you need to have a high power. So, so it actually limits the power in terms of communication distance 
and also it it uses okay it uses a, a okay a sort of a sort of spectrum management okay okay where it tries to always concentrate on the low energy spectrum okay and then tries to push it to the higher energy spectrum so it doesn't uh, uh, doesn't that it goes in that way that means okay so so the energy cov okay so the energy of the spectrum should be always within a limit okay that is uh, that is actually been taken in the in the in the in the operational process of 5g or in the standard of 5g okay so so though high frequency means higher energy but restricting the distance it, it lowers the energy and okay and secondly by using the spectrum in a very effective way okay like you will see that the uh, in, the way it does the beam forming right instead of a single antenna producing a huge amount of energy right and and generating the direction right it tries to tries to use multiple antenna okay small antennas to produce that particular signal so it tries to work on that way so that it, it reduces the energy So what is the future of 5G as scalability and performance is concerned? Okay, there is, uh, there, is, uh, there is no absolute issue in terms of scalability and performance. Okay, Dr. Chakraborty. So, so scalability and performance are both are excellent in, ca in, in case of 5G. Okay, because, because in case of 5G, you can reach to every corner of your room. So, that, and you can work with multiple devices, right? So, so that actually uh, many, many, a million devices actually, actually, uh, okay, the, the 5G standards tells about million devices connected to it. So scalability is not, not at all an issue. The issue of performance is also pretty good compared to the present, present standard, okay, the, the, the earlier standards of mobile communication. It's pretty good because, uh, because it gives you a very low latency Right, it gives you a very, a very higher bandwidth, so, so you can transfer very high data rate. Right, however, higher, higher bandwidth means you can, you can transfer very high data rate. Right, so, so performance and scalability are the two pillars. Okay, and due to which, due to which the five G is gaining such a, such a popularity. Okay. So did you get my answers? Okay. Uh, so any more questions? I think uh, no, right? Okay. So let me uh, go to the next uh, topic that what are the real enablers in 5G? Okay. I have, I have identified three strong enablers but obviously there are also some some more but, but i'm due to the limitation of time i'm okay, i will try to have a brief discussion on this very three important stuff okay so cell densification so this is a this is a particular technique right by which they actually have dense cells instead of cells having larger size, they are having more cells. So more cells will give you, okay, a better, okay, a better coverage, okay, in a smaller area. So what happens in the case of 4G, right, as the, as the coverage area is large for each of your cells, in many of the zones of the coverage area, Due to obstacles, the signal strength is weak. Because what is happening, you are you are you are starting from a long distance, right? And then when the signal reaches to a to a distance, okay, it loses its strength, and then farther, farther it gets, okay, it gets uh, depleted due to the obstacle. Okay, it farther gets depleted due to the obstacle. Right and 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 so the coverage in the case of 4G due to the large cellular structure, okay, or or what I can say, not okay, not very large, okay, 
compared to the previous uh, cellular structures like 2G, but, uh, but, but it's larger than the 5G cellular structure. So instead of large cells, 5G has actually de de generated okay, a different types of cell structures which are very highly dense in the regions which are very busy. And the cells are sparse in the regions where traffic is less. So it is something that when you have a, okay, when you have a road in between the city, in the city, right, you have more lens. Okay, you just create, create more lens in the, in the road in the city, right? right? And when you go to the highway, when the, when the, okay, that means the highway when the traffic is less, right, you create less lens in, the, in that, okay? So, so this gives a better option. So this, this cell densification gives a better option of coverage so that it can look into, so, so the cells are small, but, but as the cells are in the close proximity of the users, okay, the, the coverage okay, of, the, of the user is better than a larger cell. So spectral efficiency increase. I will not get into the detailed technique what is being done, but what I will try to say here is that obviously the obviously we understand the spectrum efficiency in increase means you are having a sort of multiplexing technique very good multiplexing technique so that uh, so that your spectrum can be used by number of users okay the spectral efficiency is being measured by a by, by the parameter which actually tells tells it that how many bits per second, okay, per bandwidth has been communicated. So it's actually bits per second per bandwidth. So what do you do, how, how we, okay, how we estimate it? Suppose I tell you that, okay, my data rate is 56 megabits per second, right? And if I, and I tell my, I tell my bandwidth is one gigahertz or maybe uh, a thousand kilohertz, something like that, okay? So what do you do? You divide the data rate by the bandwidth. So it means that the, each unit of bandwidth is responsible for how much amount of data rate, which per second. So if you look into the 4G standards, the, the spectrum efficiency, Spectrum efficiency comes 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 around, I think around uh, uh, fifteen. Okay, in the case of up, uh, okay, in the case of uplink, in the case of downlink in four G, it comes around five to six. Sorry, 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 sorry. I just I just I just told the told the reverse. Okay, so downlink is always faster. So so downlink comes around fifteen. Uh, fifteen. Uh, Okay, uh, uh, mega uh, okay, fifteen bits, fifteen bits per second per hertz. Okay, the uh, at the downlink, and the uplink in case of four G is around four to five. Four to five bits per second per hertz. Why per second per hertz? Because it is bit rate of your communication divided by your bandwidth. So bandwidth is in some, okay, some, uh, okay, some hertz, and your bit rate is bits per second. So ultimately, it cancels out and gives you bits per second per hertz. So bits per second per hertz is fifteen in the case of downlink, and and I think four to five in case of uplink. In the case of five G, it is around twenty five, both the uplink and the downlink. So uplink is around 25 bits per second per hertz, and your downlink is also something very close to the 25 or 26. So you see there is a there is a almost almost two times enhancement in the case of uh, okay, uh, okay in the case of uplink it's almost uh, four to five times 
and in the case of downlink, it is almost two times enhancement in the uh, okay in this in this particular spectral efficiency. So that's that's uh, that's very good. Okay. Now another part is called spectrum extension. Spectrum e extension is basically means that it tries to incorporate the legacy bands also. As I told, that it's not that 5G means that it is it is it is always from uh, okay from uh, from three gigahertz to uh, okay to 300 gigahertz. It also incorporates the lower bands bandwidth spectrum, legacy spectrum of the 4G or 3.5G, and 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 thus it actually covers a very large spectrum, which is actually millimeter wave bands together with the with the wave bands which are lower in frequency also. So that that accommodation is also there. So 5G cells, it, it, it doesn't mean that it will only accept the signals which are coming from very high frequencies or so very high frequency spectrum. It can also accommodate the lower part of the spectrum, the lower frequency band of the spectrum. So, so it is very accommodative. So your legacy applications can still work so LTE application, so LTE 5G, 5G convergence is also one of the very phenomenal way. So LTE will seamlessly connect with the 5G. Okay, there will be some sort of uh, a switching uh, a switching structure which will actually try to identify that which is a 4G and which is a 5G, but this will be done internal. The user experience, the user can seamlessly connect. Okay, or to a 5G backbone. Right, and there are and there are also some okay, some other technique, right? Radio resource management, okay, feedback design, users feedback, and and accordingly the uh, the cognitive. So cognitive is a feedback based, the cognitive radio, okay, based on the noise in the in the in the user end, the radio spectrum will be adjusted. So these are all the cognitive part, okay, which which are which are there in the in the five G software defined radio. SDRs, which does that, okay? So it's a, it's a, okay, as I told, it's a, it's a multi-layer cellular deployment. So it, it supports device to device communication that they don't require the cells if the devices are in very close proximity. Why we require a cell? Because a cell has a sort of uh, transmitter receiver tower. So the device communicates with the cell tower when it's transmitting, and the cell tower again pushes it back to the receiver device. But the cell tower is required when the distance between the devices are a considerable distance, when they cannot actually direct communicate. So in the case of 5G, the, the, it, has, it has actually a very layered architecture. So within a certain distance, you can communicate. It's called a, it's called a, a, a okay, handoff, which is called vertical handoff. I didn't. I didn't uh, explain it very um, okay, uh, uh, very explicitly in my in my presentation. But you can always always understand that this is this is something called okay, vertical handoff. Okay. Normally, we know that handoff offers offers between the. Um, between between the different like different cellular boundaries, right? If we go from cell one to cell two, cell two to cell three, cell four, so so it goes on handoffs. But but here the handoff is between the protocols. So you see that when the device to device is going on, there's a, there's one protocol which may be your okay, your Zigbee or Bluetooth or something like that, low power. Okay. Now when it goes to a certain distance, right? It goes to the Pico cell. Pico cell type of uh, Pico cell protocol radio network. When it goes to a certain higher distance, it goes to okay macro cell, right? And then it goes to the traditional cellular, right? And it can connect to the cloud, and you can you can have a, a, a the entire in the in the two parts of the world, one device can connect with another device. So all this, all this have been incorporated, or all this have been manifested in the five G. 
So, so as I okay, as I showed you that one of the key key insights of five G, one of the key uh, technologies of five G, you can have different types of the applications which was not being taught earlier. Okay, but if it's a video broadband anywhere, high speed train, and you can communicate within a train, you can you can okay, you can see a good movie within a train, right? Uh, through your 5G connectivity, because because it has a very it has a very seamless handoff, right? And it is a very zero latency, so you can do that. Massive Internet of Things, tactile internet. I will come to this very soon. Okay. Natural disasters. The disasters is a very high fault tolerance capability, and it has a very a very good coverage. So so natural disaster to. Uh, to handle natural disaster or to, or to set up the communications when disaster has happened is very good. Okay, it can it, it can play a great role. Uh, health services, as I told, a lot of a lot of new applications in the health. Okay, tele uh, tele tele surgery, remote healthcare, robotic surgery. Okay, all these things can take place. Okay, right, and there are okay huge broadcast services. Okay, that you can okay, you can have a, a okay. That when, due to the due to the high bandwidth, right? You don't need to need to a special broadcast channel. Right? You can use a broadcast. Broadcast means what? Broadcast means you are trying to trying to communicate with multiple devices at one point of time. Normally, normally the broadcast is not allowed due to the limitation of bandwidth. Okay, you cannot you cannot communicate multiple parties together because you require a huge amount of bandwidth to do that. Okay, so you need to have a sort of a sort of special acquisition of bandwidth, and then you can do broadcast. But in the case of five uh, G, as you have a large spectrum, right? You can you can actually uh, okay, use it for broadcast also. But but obviously, that we have to see whether regulations of broadcast as per the okay as per the uh, as per our act of communication, digital communication, okay, is not valid. Right? So, so if we look into the uh, the focus, okay. So, so mission critical service, massive IoT, mobile broadband, okay, and obviously, obviously it's a uh, fixed broadband, okay. So, so all these services, fixed broadband means basically for the for the home usage. Okay, for the home usage, you require a fixed broadband. You, you are not moving your home across. Okay, so so you require a fixed broadband for your home. You require a mobile broadband when you are on the on the road. Okay, you require you can support massive IoT deployment and and obviously mission critical service, which actually has a has a zero latency. And zero fault tolerance, and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, the zero fault. Okay, so so zero fault, zero latency services, mission critical, massive IoT, a mobile broadband, and fixed broadband. All these can be supported okay, in the in the in the cover of the five G. So, so, as I told that it is a it's a high battery life. Okay, it's a, it's a, it's a high bandwidth, high reliability, high coverage. Now, now, the technology requirements are, are some sort of, you have to have a millimeter wave system, which is an RFIC. Okay, it's a radio frequency integrated circuit, which will work as a transmitter receiver. So if you are building a particular handsets, so why your, why your handsets they may not work in the 5G spectrum because the 5G spectrum requires a different types of radio frequency IC integration, which is the which is the transceiver, which 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 operates in the millimeter wave. So, so this these are so these are some of the technology. Okay, we need to adapt. Okay. New challenge coding, okay, LDPC, low density parity check. And we'll also see, okay, so this is a, 
this is a particular uh, okay type of uh, type of error channel encoding. You know the channel encoding is something when you there are two types of encoding. One is the source encoding, but the channel encoding. Source actually converts your message to symbols, right? And from symbol to signal is called the channel encoding. So how you convert the symbols to signals? Okay. So uh, uh, so this is uh, this is a different type of channel encoding, which is actually low density, which actually uh, gives you a huge huge amount of savings in terms of energy. Okay. Network slicing. It's a virtualization of the network. So there are different categories of users requiring different types of speed of the data, different types of bandwidth. Now, normally when we tell that, hey, my network is static, it's a bandwidth and every support is sent to all. But in the case of 5G, it's a virtualization of the network. It means it actually, okay, okay, offers you Okay, offers you the as per your requirement. Though the backend is same, but the service, the network service offered to you depends on your requirement. So it doesn't that it doesn't mean that it's a it's a 5G means you have to uh, pay for the entire spectrum. Right? Obviously, I, I I didn't discuss about the revenue policy. So revenue policy is one of the factors which is getting hold in different countries. So the so revenue policy will be done in such a way that it can it can actually work with the network slicing concept, right? Massive MIMO, multi-input, multi-output radio antennas, okay, which are actually the, the same antenna can work as an input as well as an output. Okay, and can simultaneously do the job. So it's a, it's a different antenna technology. Massive connectivity and low latency. So so these, so these are the, each of this, each of these are the, are the sort of research applications or research domains in the okay, in the field of 5G, a technological challenges, a technological advancement which have been done in each of these parts in the 5G, right? And all of this actually focuses on a very robust communication between the the IoT devices and okay and machines, machine to machine communications. So it is called a new radio. So 5G NR is a standard. It's a it's a it's a standard, which means that it actually uh, it's a it's a it's a new radio standard. I'm not getting into details of this, but there's a lot of lot of things into 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 it. Okay. So so the user interface. Okay, if you see this diagram, right? Okay, so this is, the, this is the user interface, right? Which can connect with a, with a local hotspot. So these are the 5G hotspots, or it can or it can connect to the mobile station. Right? That depends on that what type of what type of uh, okay okay user. If you are doing a smart home, then it will connect with a connect with a mobile uh, 5G hotspot. If you are in a okay, if you are what okay, if you are moving across the city. With a handle device, right? It will be communicating with any of the particular towers, okay? Right, and there, right, and there are multiple, multiple beams and multiple spectrum, okay, offered by multiple antenna system in the particular in the particular cells in each of the cells, okay? Right, and that's and that's called the beam forming, right? So I'm not getting into all this because I think many of this has been discussed. Okay, uh, uh, this uh, this OFDM, okay, this uh, uh, okay, this CP CP OFDM policy, which is actually being uh, this, uh, okay, which is a, which is a very a very important uh, important policy in the case of uh, uh, okay, this uh, uh, this five G. So so this is actually this OFDM is a different type of OFDM, which is. Uh, which is, which is normally been taken care of by the new radio uh, 5G standard. It's called the cyclic prefix OFD, which is a sort of uh, right. You can okay, you can actually uh, okay have a sort of a circular operation on the OFDF channels. OFDM, as we know, they, they're called up, uh, okay, they're up, up, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. So this means that you have the 
uh, frequency channels which are orthogonal. So if you if you send the channel simultaneously without any uh, okay okay bands between uh, guard bands between them, still they will work simultaneously. Okay, okay, it's, uh, okay the, they will uh, they reach the receivers without mixing up because they're orthogonal frequency channels. And then there is a cyclic prefix which actually tries to tries to use the same orthogonal uh, orthogonal frequency channels within a particular uh, a period of time, over a, okay, over a particular interval of time. So these are some of the very, very new radio concepts which have been introduced in the, in the 5G network. Right, and this is, this is, this is again the stack, what is, what we have the, it, okay, it's called the uh, 3GPP architecture, okay? Uh, 3GPP architecture of 5G. Uh, obviously, a lot of software layers are there on the stack, right? And you will see that, uh, okay, it starts from radio access network, transport network, phone network, and then the then the common internet. Yeah, 5G can connect, easily connect in the cloud, which is your common internet. And from that, you can actually access. So, so though 5G is a mobile network, uh, this is also pretty important. Though 5G is a mobile network, Okay, you can always have a, okay, a 5G gateway. Now this 5G gateway will give you the, the seamless connectivity from your 5G to your cloud or to your traditional internet, right? And, and through the internet, you can now access okay, any, okay, any particular device, which is there at the, at the lower end of the 5G. So there are there are a lot of uh, lot of techniques which are called uh, that those uh, those who are working or those who wish to work in this domain of IoT five. There, there is a concept of brokerage, brokers. Okay, so brokers are middlewares, so, which actually sits in the gateways, right, and which actually control uh, the logical logical uh, okay, task task processing. Okay, from the from the IoT end, which is the leaf end to the user end who are sitting at the internet. So, so the user sitting at the internet, how can collect the data which is generated by multiple cameras in a surveillance scenario, okay, or multiple sensors, right, in an agricultural land. Suppose you take an example that, A, that I have hectares of agricultural land, right, and I am an agricultural officer, Sitting in the sitting in a district headquarter, okay, the, the agricultural land where I am trying to monitor is maybe okay, it's fifty or sixty or hundred kilometers from this place, and it's hectares of hectares of land. So how I can look into each of these data of the devices, and I can look into with that with that I can look into the each of the zones of my land. How I can do that? So I can, I can, so if there are camera sensors and if there are other sensors, which gives me the quality of the, a phenotypic quality of the, of the, of the plants of the flowers, as well as the soil quality, the sensors, right? I can actually get the data okay, from each of the sensors and I can collect the data at different time intervals. All will be done through this seamless connectivity. Okay, you will have a you will have the sensors at the front end, which will connect to the five G gateway. Okay, to the uh, the five G access or the five G access points, which are basically either your five G cells or your static access points. And the five G access points will connect with your gateway, and through the gateway you will get the data through the internet, and you will get the data. So this is a very, very important uh, deployment and it's an interesting strategy what happens in the 5G IoT domain. Okay, that is being pressed here. Okay, how you do that, okay? So the access points can have different hierarchies, okay? You can have a series of access points, 5G access points, or you can have a series of gateways also with that. So this is a this is a okay a uh, okay a very very standard deployment scenario which is being uh, comes from one of the pioneer key sites in communication. So uh, so this is one of the very very uh, 
okay, very uh, simple and uh, and a very well established use case of 5G network. Okay, so you see what happens here is that you have the devices. So there are different types of devices which are at the at the leaf end. Okay, these are the devices. Okay, uh, these are the devices. Now these devices. Okay, these devices actually connects with the with the 5G hotspot. Okay, these are the these are the hotspots, 5G hotspots. Okay, right, and this is a 5G mobile which can also work as a 5G hotspot. Why 5G is required? Because these devices are generating a huge amount of data, and if you have to trap them, right, you require the 5G backbone to trap that data, to, to accept that bandwidth. So now from this actually 5G, right? You can have different gateways, right? They, okay, they can, okay, they can actually communicate directly to a satellite, which is, which is very, very ambitious. I, okay, that was, I haven't uh, uh, worked much on this, but, it, but what's the most important architecture or, or the most common way is that okay you can you can you can connect it to the gateway so this is the gateway this is the 5g gateway from where okay so this is the 5g gateway from where you can connect the cloud or you can connect a fiber okay and you can and you can okay distribute to the to the standard internet Okay, to, 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 to any large network, okay? And the downlink will also happen in the same way, right? In the, in the, in the way the uplink, I'm telling it's also the downlink can happen. You can, you can so, so an user can sit here. So an user can, okay? Okay, so an user can actually connect with the cloud. An user can connect to the cloud, right, and can 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 communicate with its device. The massive deployment of the of this five uh, G IoT. So, so service, internet, communication, device. Okay, all these technology domains are being okay, are being well covered in the in the five G standards. And the 5G applications also target in this direction. So, so already this pyramid I have shown, there are some okay, some supports. Okay, I, I think I think some of us already discussed EMBB, these are very important terms, enhanced mobile broadband, data rate of 20 Gbps. Okay, okay, huge. Okay. Uh, Ultra reliable, massive machine time communication. Okay. And these are all, all being defined by 3GPP release 16, December 2019. Let's wait for the for the release of 3GPP 17. I don't know whether it's already come up, but uh, but 3GPP 16. So so you see that in the different releases of, of 5G, okay, okay, different. A different extensions of the of the of the quality of 5G has been focused, and smart vehicle and smart factory, which is a very very important aspect of application, is being there is is there in this in this particular uh, okay, in this particular uh, uh, charter of 5G. Okay, so so this is what is actually again what we have. We have the devices. Okay, we have the devices and we have the uh, okay, uh, okay, RAN, radio access network. Okay, and then we have the core network instances. Core network instances are the, are the components which actually divide the spectrum, allocate the spectrum, okay, okay decide on the, uh, decide on the beam formation, right? If, uh, okay, decide on the, uh, uh, decide on the error, error correction protocols and all this. Right, and this also works as a gateway, okay, to the to the other networks. So, so core networks and from it connects to the cloud. Okay, these are the 
strategies. Okay? And this is very important. So this is this is another very important aspect of okay of this 5G standard, the spectrum allocation. So if you see what the diagram does, the diagram shows actually uh, two axes. One axis is the frequency, right? And the and the and the other axis is the is a sort of sort of numerical, okay? The numerology. Numerology is a is a sort of the, the multiple scales of the frequency. So what it means is that okay, actually find the slots. Slots are defined in terms of your uh, okay your frequency. Okay, your frequency, frequency, and a sort of temporal. Okay, it's a it's a uh, okay okay it's a okay in a one particular time okay time. Okay, one particular frequency slot is allocated okay, to a uh, okay, to a particular user, right? And these and these frequency slots are all orthogonal. Okay, and there are some frequency slots which are which are actually identified with some specific applications like EMBB. EMBB has a particular frequency has a so if you have to. If you have to target any EMBB type of applications, so you have to look into the uh, the EMBB slots. Okay, if you are trying to move into some EMTC applications, you are going into the EMTC slots. So the so the frequency spectrum is being okay is being actually based on the different types of carrier frequencies. They are being slotted, right? And these slots are actually being earmarked with different types of applications. So if you are generating any application, you have to, uh, okay, that means you will come to one particular frequency slot and accordingly your communication will happen. So, so smart homes, smart industries, smart vehicles, okay, very uh, smart entertainment in 5G are very interesting applications in this term, okay? 5G connected. So I will, so Caesar, okay, this is, uh, this is also one of the important thing, which is there is called in the case of so, okay, this is an aspect which uh, which takes care takes place in the in the in the smart industry. Okay, in the okay in the case of smart industry, you require a a time synchronization, which is the TSN. Why it is required? It is required because you have multiple devices which are working. There will be there will be uh, okay some. Uh, some items will be moving and the gate will be opened and again the items get out and the gate will be closed. So it require a very precise time synchronization. So there is a module or there is a particular component in the 5G code which actually works on the time synchronization between the, between the devices. Okay, and this TSN, TSN is an added. Okay, I will tell that TSN might not be in the normal 5G but TSN is an added component which is basically used for for industry 5.0 right so 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 5g iot for industry or for or for smart industry incorporates the the tsn component okay so these are the enterprise slice iot slice and common slice so this you need to understand that is uh, that is that what I'm telling here is that you can understand there are some core functions and there are some network functions in the 5G which are not not for all. So so you have different categories. One category is enterprise, which is actually going for okay going for this industrial IoT or the or the or the machine to machine communications. Massive IoT slice, which is basically for on road deployment on-field deployment, maybe vehicular communication, maybe agricultural monitoring, maybe traffic monitoring, uh, may, maybe environment monitoring, okay? And another one is common, common, uh, okay, common, okay, common applications which require a, a, a good amount of bandwidth, like your normal mobile usage, right? You are you're uploading a video, you are seeing a movie, you are seeing a live, uh, a live match, Right, you are doing a mobile, you're doing a video call, so all this will be so. 
so this so this type of applications okay will be actually segregated in the in the 5g in different protocols in different bandwidths in different spectrum usage right and this all will be uh, taken care okay that means it uh, in the cloud so it's so normally the user is on the other side of this user are on the other side of this particular cloud and the and the user can connect to your to your 5g network so different type of service requirements so so each of these are different types of service requirements okay so automotive manufacturing energy utilities healthcare technologies all so 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 services are automotive manufacturing energy and and health and so the core services right and okay that means and you can see that how the progress has been done from the current to the 5g okay it is it is cloud robotics it was very interesting uh, things has been added in the 5g experience autonomous control cloud robotics machine intelligence and real time control remote operations these are all the thar, all the emphasis of 5g's and you have lot of technologies which enables us to do that 5g new radio virtualized radio access network federated network slicing distributed cloud real time machine learning and ai so real time machine learning and ai is the need of the 5g iot because it is it is, it is something the data which is being uh, the, the, okay okay your learning will be done on the data which is online this is this is something very uh, uh, okay, not not so common in the standard machine learning technique where you have already you have offline data and you do the okay the model executes online but in the case of real time your learning takes place on the on the online data which is a different type of strategy in machine learning which is also coming up coming up in the 5g iot in a great way so this is again a strategy where we have different types of deployment strategies okay you can have a indoor deployment strategy so these are all indoor deployment strategies where, where we have the narrow band iot's and these are all outdoor outdoor deployment strategies where you have a normal 5g 5g connectivity or 5g it's iot's and normally the analytics analytics are normally happens in the cloud or okay, or you can have a little bit mini cloud which i call fog so, so analytics happen there we haven't uh, okay, shown explicitly the fog here uh, okay the cloud has been shown here but also there is at the at the present uh, present day you can also have the fog or edge analytics which are, which are, which is something lower than the cloud but uh, but having said that has 5g has a low latency okay that means it's, that means if okay you can you can do majority of the things in the cloud so now that means if i uh, how much time i have 5 minutes yes sir okay. you can take 5 okay. 10 minutes more no problem okay okay fine so this is a this is a wonderful video okay i want to uh, show you i will skip up this is a this is from the from the pioneer of 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 iot samsung just listen to that okay
हेलो सर यस सर एक्चुअली योर स्लाइड इज विजिबल बट आर यू शोइंग एनीथिंग वीडियो और लाइक दैट वीडियो इज नॉट शोइंग ओके ओके तो एक्चुअली आई कैन नॉट सी द पार्टिसिपेंट्स कैन यू सी द वीडियो ओके 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 नो पार्टिसिपेंट्स ओके 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 लेट मी लेट मी लेट मी ओके लेट मी एडजस्ट टू दिस सॉरी देन एक्चुअली योर स्लाइड इज विजिबल Okay. Okay. The fine, link fine. and that that particular thing is visible, but the video is okay. not visible. Okay. Okay. Let me let me try. Okay. It. Okay. Sir. Let me try. Okay. Let me get out of this. Sir, I think you first uh, stop sharing and then you, again you share the video. Yes. Yes. Let me. What my what I will do? I will I will let me uh, copy this link and and show it to all of you because this is the same same. I will not show it from my uh, from my presentation mode, and that can uh, that can be a little bit uh, difficult. I will uh, copy this. Yes, sir. If you copy this link and uh, run it directly from the YouTube and share yes. your YouTube yes. screen directly. Yes. Okay. Now let me go to the web. Can you see my web web window? All of you? No, sir. Your slide is visible. Okay, slide is visible. Okay. So, so what I do, I let me get out of this. I let me reshare again. Okay. So let me share the screen once again. Can you see my web window? Yes, sir. Now your YouTube screen is visible. Okay. Can you see my YouTube screen now? Yes, sir. Your screen is visible now. Okay. Visible to everyone now? But sir, sound is not uh, audible. It is not audible, sir. Sir, whenever you have shared your screen, there is a check box that uh, okay. sound. There is an extra check box, so you have to click this so that the sound will be audible to okay. everybody. Okay, okay. Sir, on the left bottom corner there is a check box. Whenever you are going uh, to share. Okay. Okay. I'm sharing. So what will happen in the left bottom corner? So during uh, whenever you are uh, clicking that na share screen button in the Zoom, mm -hmm. then a window will open where all the icons will be uh, there. In that okay. screen on the left bottom side, there is a check box that. Uh, oh, share sound. Screen. Okay, I got it. I got it. Okay. Yes, sir. you check that and uh, oh. click it, and then you share. Then it will okay. be audible. This is showing in this. Uh, yes, sir, now mm -hmm. it is audible. Up. Is how many objects we had detected, and how many objects we have missed. Let's go from here. Yeah. And terminals. So our little production line, including a conveyor belt and a couple of major components, and right hand side your cameras taking all the imagery and send back to our AI vision center. 
the vision center then analyze what's going on and send back the direction to PLC. That is you to remotely control the behavior of robots and gates in a very precise time manner. Uh, here's the shot of our uh, initial test equipment uh, using our demonstration. There are two metrics we are showing in this uh, screen. On the top is how many objects we have detected and how many objects we have missed. Right now, the TSN is on. Everything is fully synchronized, so that all the objects get recognized and taking actions towards. And below, we are showing the metric of time synchronization offset. Right now, because TSN is turned on, the timing error is in the microsecond level. It's precisely synchronized. Now, if we turn off the TSN, and let's see what happened. Now, you're going you're gonna to start to say, we're missing you know, one more object as a result. Uh, and also, very important to look at the time synchronization errors. To normal. Now, let's uh, turn our focus to uh, reliability. One of the uh, radio technology we're using in the demo is called Quality Multipoint, or COM, where one device is communicating to multiple points. It's very common in the industry setup or environment where you have a lot of metal structures either fixed or moving. And when certain radio link paths get blocked, your radio quality will degrade. And that's where the benefit of COM will come in. In this case, you can say, even though when this structure path get blocked, there's still other you know, direction signal coming in, create redundancy. That's where we can ensure reliable communications. We have this device. Currently, the comp is off. There's one pass from this TRP to the device. Right now, everything looks great. There's no blockage. The signal is good. There's no packet error uh, in these plots. Now, what happened if there is a blockage? This is actually what happened in our system, where we use a small robot to pull in a metal sheet to mimic the radio blockage scenarios. What happened as a result of the radio blockage, you're going to see a lot of packet errors. And what if we turn comp on, and then you can say transmission from multiple TRP points to the device. Even though one of the link get blocked, you still have redundancy from other directions. As a result, there is no packet error, and uh, everything is working as they should be. In some of the use cases, the requirement of reliability. We're showing two new features for 5G. The support of TSN, time-sensitive networking, and the ultra-reliable communications. With these features, we have the opportunity for the first time to replace wire Ethernet cable with wireless and 5G. This is going to open up a huge opportunity for the next industry revolution in terms of flexible manufacturing and uh, productivity increase. OK, so I think that you have, okay, you have actually uh, got the two things, right, all of you? So this is, uh, okay, this is actually the time, uh, time synchronization, what you have, okay, incorporating the TSN and the reliability. Okay. Is my screen is visible to all of you now? Yes, sir, your slide is okay. visible. Okay, okay. So, uh, so what we are moving, what we are moving into, we are moving into from mobile internet in terms of things and then the tactile internet. So tactile internet is something that when the, when the devices, Devices on the move are connected to the data. That's called tactile internet. Okay. So normally we know that the devices, the devices, uh, okay, or the machines when the uh, when the machines are normally connected at the present, they are connected with a fixed, uh, okay, okay, fixed Ethernet communication, right, or a wireless communication some way. But it's very difficult when the machine moves and still the communication goes on. Right, and that's and that's you have you have you have seen that in the in that particular uh, demonstration by okay from uh, from Qualcomm that that how multiple radio sources can can help you on that particular work, work process. Okay, so that is what is tactile uh, tactile internet. That is that one of the things which is happening majorly in the industrial okay, industrial IoT and industrial machine to machine communication uh, for okay for this particular five G network. Okay. Uh, okay, this, uh, these are some of the home applications. I think these are very, 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 very good. And you can have a, that with the, the, the 5G television will be something where you can, a particular television can work for everything. Okay. 
Uh, there are multiple, multiple bandwidths. You can do a lot of, uh, lot of applications on the net. Okay, okay. So at home will be sort of off office. Uh, you have a huge amount of security and surveillance can be deployed in the visual and all the different types of things because you can have a lot of data can be captured through the 5G. And obviously you can have, you can have diagnosis and disease detection at home. Okay, through so, so a lot of these imagery sensors as well as other sensors which can actually take your data very quickly, almost zero real time to your doctor. So these, are, these are very beautiful applications for adopting in the 5G home applications. So, so this is a this is an activity what uh, what we are doing. This is an activity which is being which is an effort by okay by the Calcutta University, Sikkim Manipal University in Sikkim, SIDAC, uh, SIDAC which is uh, okay which is a center for uh, okay center for development of advanced computing and Samir, Samir which is a uh, uh, okay, Government of India, Ministry of IT Agents, okay, IT Research Agency uh, for for antenna and communication research. So we are we are trying to team up, okay, right? And we have already teamed up, and we have given our uh, proposal to Ministry of IT, where we are trying to develop a 5G IoT best. Okay, it's it's actually a 5G IoT a center of excellence activity, which will have smart agriculture, smart home. Uh, Okay, and we are trying to focus on how we can how we can uh, okay have a uh, example example demonstration at uh, one of the villages in Sikkim. So so this is an activity what we are doing. So so you see what is done here. This is a smart home. So in the smart home you have you have, okay, you have many devices. So uh, so these are your devices in the smart home. Okay, these are all devices: smart smart light, smart fan. Uh, okay, smart uh, smart radar for telemedicine, data services which are which are which are connected with a with a consumer gateway, right? And similarly, smart agriculture, a lot of devices which will be also connected with a uh, with a gateway, industrial gateway, because here here we require industrial because here a lot of other reliability. Whenever we have have a, a deployment in terms of uh, terms of applications which are on field or industry, we have certain certain other other things to be taken care of, which is normally taken care of by industrial gateway. So we have a consumer gateway and industrial gateway, which will both connect with a, 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 with a, with a 5G gateway, okay? And then it will move to the cloud so that the users can connect to all this, okay, through the, through the cloud interface. So this is a deployment and this is, a, this is also, a, uh, this is also a, 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 okay, a policy of government of India. So government of India tries to uh, okay, it's trying to push the 5G by its uh, by its uh, uh, okay uh, okay it's called the Bharat Net Fiber. So what it is doing the optical fiber, the Bharat Net Fiber is actually putting the 5G backbone, okay, at the at the, at the central at the at the at the at the village office, which is called the panchayat office. Okay, so in the panchayat office, the 5G backbone is there, and from the panchayat office, okay, the 5G gateways. Okay, for different homes are connected. And each of these homes can have multiple, multiple devices, smart devices. So, so data rate will be high because, because you see there are so many devices in each home. And in one panchayat, under one panchayat, there are so many homes. So this is the concept of smart village. You know, you know what happens? Through this, you don't require, so these devices don't require now independent. 4G connections. You don't require independent SIM connections. All the SIM connections are restricted, right? You can uh, SIM connections are restricted in the in the terms of bandwidth. So, so you have a lot, not a large number of devices, right? Which has a 5G gateway, consumer gateway, which connects with a 5G backbone at at okay at some location, which is which is within. I think the 5G backbone works pretty good within a range of around 10 kilometers. Okay, 10 to 20 kilometers, right? Right. If there is a large displacement, you can have multiple 5G backbones, and all these 5G backbones can lead you to the connectivity to your your entire world. Okay, because 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 all the data is connected by the 5G backbone, and through the 5G protocol, they are now being you know, connected to the cloud or 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 okay, or the different type of networks. So this is the uh, this is the proposal which we are working with. And this is a, this is a very interesting work. This can be done for 
not only for home, for other applications also. Now, the last part of my lecture, which I will just quickly uh, move off. So, so as you have a huge amount of data, the machine learning will one of the key points in this particular 5G IoT. And obviously, there are certain challenges here. Okay, these are small, uncertain data set. Data on the move. You have to do machine learning on data on the move. There's a high, high dynamic data. Okay. Uh, uh, so we have to so we have to work with ML models where the where the features changes with time. Okay. There are options that as, as we have number of devices and it's a very good distributed network, we can have a distributed learning phenomenon. Okay. You can have a you can have a learning paradigm which learns very fast because through 5G you can trap the simultaneously you can trap that trap the traffic happening in the in the busiest place in Kolkata as well as traffic traffic happening in maybe uh, okay, maybe one highway in Bardoma. Okay, both the both the data can be together can be connected. Okay, and we can have we can have different scenarios we can learn. Uh, okay, by collecting the data, so we can have a have a, have a lot of distributed learning paradigm, right? As as five G requires low latency, you have to have the algorithmic execution uh, within a very small time. So that's also that because because data is five G assures that data is low latency, but you also have to assure that your algorithm has also low latency to to map with the data to map with the five G requirement. So that's also a challenge in the in the in the in the case of machine learning implementations. Okay, so these are some of the Challenges, research challenges in the domain of machine learning and, and the challenges in the domain of 5G IoT convergence. Right? And, and, and so adaptive learning is also one of the things, one of the important aspects of 5G is that how we do the network planning, because the network planning is also adaptive here, right? The cells, some of the cells are very congested, some of the cells are very, uh, uh, okay, they are not, not very loaded. So, so, so how you how you how you on and off the cells according to the requirement of the traffic, and also also in the hierarchical, okay, how you on and off the cells like you have the you have the macro cells, you have the pico cells, you have the device to device communication. So so how you uh, okay that how you generate the heat map of your traffic and accordingly you switch on your communication or switch on or switch off your communication uh, uh, terminals. That's very important. That uh, and a lot of lot of usage of machine learning has been has uh, has been used in this particular domain now. So cooperative deep learning, you have different different views of the same object. So you can extract a lot of features of the objects, right? And you can push all the all your all your small small learning outcomes, right? And you can generate a federated learning. Or a cooperative learning approach, which can generate a very, a very excellent model within a large amount of features and large variation, uh, large variation of features, and that and that can and okay and that can help to help to classify complex environments easily, right? Because you have the different uh, forms of the data abstracted from the, uh, the complex environment, and you. Uh, that make them learn, right? With the, 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 okay, that means all this, all these small networks, okay, will it will generate the the input, okay, and you can you can fuse them, right? And you can make a very good model, okay, right? And and so 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 these are the these are the work what we are doing in the IoT domain, uh, specifically the last work I have uh, okay we, okay has come up to our okay, when, yeah, okay added into our work uh, work activity that is the uh, cu sedat samir smit joint research on 5g iot this is a uh, we're starting and we also uh, welcome the the researchers to uh, to contribute in this activity so, so other than that we are working with meti we are working with the department of science and technology government of india we are working with intel on 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 the, on the cloud services for iot and obviously the TCS, uh, TCS funding for the security and IP framework. So, so this is all from my end, and I have a fantastic research group on the on the multiple projects. Uh, okay, uh, some have graduated. 
like Dr. Christian and Dr. Shagatu, they have graduated already, and and some of the some of them are working in my lab at present. So this is all about uh, the activities, what I am doing, and what are the futuristic activities I'm trying to plan with the uh, uh, 5G IoT uh, convergence. Right, that's all from my end. And uh, this is a conclusion I normally give in IoT lecture that we are we are we are. Okay, and 5G brings up a better perspective to this connectivity, right? We're all connected, uh, okay, through the gigantic, uh, once 5G comes, right, all the devices will get connected in a very gigantic uh, sphere, right? And that actually supports the, supports the Uta, the Advaita philosophy. So, uh, so thank you all. And, and, and now I am open for any questions. If you have any questions, uh, okay, you can, you can please go ahead. Any questions for the participants? Participants, you can uh, ask questions to our resource person. You can write in the chat box also. Sir, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Sir, uh, this uh, 5G, uh, the infrastructure is a big bottleneck and uh, constraint uh, with the context of our country. As of now, uh, we have nice projects coming up. It is a welcome sign. And uh, what will be the implementation uh, level, sir, in the days to come? Because it, it has to be done phase-wise in order to reach the entire uh, demography of our country. What is your insight regarding this, sir? Yeah, so uh, so the massive massive five G test bed has been uh, has been uh, um, okay uh, developed at uh, IIT IIT Chennai. So so IIT Chennai and I think a couple other institutes along with Samir, uh, they have instituted the first test bed. The test bed is very important in in terms of five G five G deployment. So I hope that as the test bed is created and it will, it has already started working as per my, my information. So, so I think uh, the more and more deployment will come up. Second issue is obviously the cost in, in terms of the SDR, because the main, uh, main cost in the 5G is this, is this, is handling the, the spectrum. And this is handled by the, by the SDR, which is pretty costly. And unless you have, unless you have a, okay, a very good application, okay, uh, okay, it's very difficult to to do five G for your okay five G five G deployment for a specific application. But obviously, in terms of the user, uh, okay, okay, in terms of mobile applications, that is fantastic. I think a lot of mobile service providers will come up uh, to 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 offer you five G mobile. Uh, just for uh, uh, just for all users, but as you rightly said, that if you are trying to do a strategic deployment of a specific application, say in case of health, say in case of agriculture, uh, say in case of smart health, right? Uh, the the deployment strategy and the cost, okay, okay, is okay as well as okay as well as the infrastructure in terms of the testing, okay, is uh still still a factor but i think that as the progress has been taken already already the testbed has come up i think in the in the the previous year so so more and more uh, uh development will be coming up in this field for for specific applications so so maybe our 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 activity which is which is, which is focusing on smart agriculture and smart home and I think similar, a lot of applications will be coming both from the uh, business enterprises as well as research institutes. Uh, this will, I think, slowly and steadily will uh, will, uh, will balance the ecosystem, 
right? And if the balance of ecosystem, the ecosystem is balanced, I think all the all the teething problems will okay will 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 scale down, right? That's my view. Thank you very much for your insight, sir. Much appreciated, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, sir. So, any other participants have any question? Okay, there are some chat questions. So, please check. Uh, okay, now these are all all on the feedback. So I think there are no no further questions. Yes, I, I, I think that there is no it. further questions. Yes. If there are questions, they can connect always me to my uh, to my email, but I'm very happy to answer them. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So participants, as sir has already told you that if you have any queries or any questions, you can ask. You can directly connect, uh, sir, through his email ID, and uh, sir will be ha happy to answer your questions. So, sir, I think that there is no more questions for this session. So thank you, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank, thank you for your uh, informative session. I think that our participants will be uh, highly benefited by your speech and your interactive session. So thank you once again, sir, on behalf of Department of Applied Electronics and Instrumentation Engineering, Guru Nanak Institute of Technology. We uh, thank you for your uh, valuable speech and for giving your precious time for us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Paramita, for, for, for organizing this. And thanks to all the participants for listening to me. I hope that uh, we will all connect in any of the future occasions. Thank you all. Sure, listen. Okay, so this is uh, the end of our technical session one. So I would like to um, request our participants to fill up the attendance form and the quiz uh, which has already been shared to you. And our next session will start at 2.30 uh, p.m. sharp. So um, I am ending today's session, first session over here. So thank you all the participants for your cooperation and participation. So see you soon in at 2.30 p.m. Thank you all. So do you have anything to say, participants? Do you have anything to say? Madam, the Google uh, Classroom link will be shared in the WhatsApp. Yes, sir. It has already been shared in the uh, WhatsApp group. We will share it once again. Thank you very much, madam. Okay. So I'm ending the session. Thank you, uh, participants.